What is good, everybody? Quan Incredible here, here to talk about Four Nights of Apocalypse, Chapter 59. In this chapter, I really do like how it kind of, like, just went in, like, three... Like, it had, like, three plot lines, I guess, kind of going all at the same time. Granted, they are kind of all about more or less the same thing with the big goal of, like, finding Gawain. But I do, I did really like how it was split up into, like, you know, three. Um, but one thing that I thought was kind of weird was, like, a lot of things that I predicted actually came true in this chapter or got confirmed in this chapter. Which is weird because I feel like, I feel like I'm usually wrong when it comes to a lot of my, like, predictions or things I think is going to happen. So it was just kind of weird. But in the beginning of the chapter, it does start off with Lancelot, which is where we left off in the last chapter. And we do find out that the mysterious girl is Guinevere, which, you know, this was probably like one of the more obvious ones. Not the most obvious thing in the chapter, but I, I did think this one was probably one of the more like, you know, easily predicted ones. And and one of the really interesting things about her is that she keeps reading his mind or not necessarily or she says she's not reading his mind, but she says that she knows the answers to, you know, like a lot of the questions or she just knows things about him already, which is really weird. Like, I'm not for sure how she's able to do this or what it is. Um, I do recall seeing, I think it was on Reddit I seen this, but I want to say it was, someone had a theory that I liked a lot, where it was, um, they said that maybe she has an ability to, like, see the future or has a vision type ability similar to Bartra, you know, Bartra, the previous king of, of Leonis, Elizabeth is that, um, he has the ability to, you know, get premonitions of the future, so I wonder if she had if she has something like this and like she was just remembering or not remembering but she was seeing into the future to get the answers of things that she may have had a conversation with Lancelot in the future but then using those like using that information like in the current story like right now which would be you know I feel like that's kind of weird <laughs> now that I said it all out, out loud but maybe she could be doing something along those lines the other weird thing is like their like age gap is a little strange i know things operate a lot differently in japan than they do in in the states as far as like what's acceptable but all right like i don't even want to get deep into it, it was just it, it was weird though to me too um if you know you know but <laughs> but aside from that when she's leaving she does tell him that she is going to be there um you know and she is going to be in leonis until tomorrow and that they should meet up but she also says that she can give him the location of the one that he is searching for meaning that she more than likely knows where Gawain is and is going to tell Lancelot exactly where where he is so Lancelot should be able to find him in the next chapter after that it does go over to the Cheon plot line with uh, Tristan stepping in and stopping him before he goes too far we did get to find out that this person in the armor is not actually Gawain it's just some dude who found the suit of armor and just decided to put it on because it looks cool <laughs> which I mean the armor does look cool I I, I was a, a huge fan of you know the the um you know the whole like white and gold armor you know with all, with all the little suns on it. i thought it was like i thought the armor looked cool plus it had a, a nice shield on it like you can kind of see the shield r r right here and i'm i'm like a big fan of shields but that's neither here nor there but we do find out like i said this is not gawain but that doesn't make what Chian did any like less bad at all like he's still 100% a traitor for this one and uh big ups to Annie because Annie was actually the one to tip off Tristan to let him know that you know Chiana was acting a little sus and I know there's something that I was thinking about as well as I know like probably a bunch of other people were thinking about too is like if Annie saw that Chiana was acting sus how come she never said anything to anybody like how, she, how come she didn't tell, tell Tristan but as we got to see in this chapter that was not the case she 100% alerted Tristan to what was going on so you know big ups for Annie for that and then for the last part of the chapter it does go back um to you know Pelio versus the, the uh this mysterious buff dude their fight you know does continue it is reaching a point though where Pelio does realize that this guy is so skilled he has to be a holy knight of some kind and he does ask him where he's from or, or who he is or who I think it's where he is a, a holy knight um like you know where he is a holy knight of but of course he refuses to tell him because then he said you know this fight will go from a duel to a death match and this is when Percival and his group bursts in and they say like oh you know oh Gawain we found you but the guy recognizes Percival and his group while Donnie recognizes this guy's uh, voice and after he reminds Percival of the promise Percival does remember who he is and it turns out to be Pelgard which is one of the things that I was saying this one is the one I had like the most stock in just because you know as far as like the whole personality you know the 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 uh, build the even like we got to see his magic like it was just so many things were lining up for this to be pelgard it just there's no way it could be anybody else but the thing with pelgard being here is it's really strange to me because in arthurian lord guinevere is arthur's wife like that is the person arthur is in love with 
and Ironside was sent to find Arthur's bride. Meaning, to me, Ironside would be looking for Guinevere while, you know, Guinevere is in Leonis. But Pelgard is here in Leonis. So, it makes me wonder, like, is Pelgard going to accidentally stumble upon Arthur's, like, bride and bring her back to Arthur? Like, it... Like, even d despite the fact that Pelgard said he didn't even want to find her in the uh, first place, or like, or is Ironside actually going to be here too? It, it's just, it's very interesting to see like how that's all going to play out. Also, I'm not for sure what Pelgard is necessarily even here for. Like, 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 is he here to bring back Gawain or like, did, or does he just want to fight Percival again? Like, it, it seems really odd because I don't think Pelgard is so stupid to try to fight Percival again in the middle of Leonis. Like, I feel like that would just be really, really, really dumb. <laughs> it would just be so dumb, considering, like, there'd be hundreds of Holy Knights probably there. You know, Meliodas is still in the uh, capital. It would just be really, really stupid of him to try to, like, fight Percival in the middle of Leonis. So I don't think he's going to do that, because I don't think Percival, or not Percival, because I don't think Pelgard is, like, a complete moron. But it's just, I wonder what his whole goals here are in all of this. I mean, there is the possibility that he could kidnap Percival and, like, you know, take him as an apprentice, which I'm not completely opposed to. But I just don't know how that's necessarily going to fit into this arc, I guess. I, I'm not really for sure. I know a lot of people are, you know, really wanting all the four nights to finally come together so we can hear what Melios' plan is. So, obviously, if Percival gets kidnapped, that would make that take even longer but according to the prophecy they should like all four knights should meet though so it, i i don't think that's going to happen at least not before all of them meet and as for who gawain actually is or where gawain actually is i really have no idea who or where gawain is or could be at this point because like we didn't really get to see any background characters like that could you know potentially be in the future like they could be gawain i know last review i was saying that you know that that there was some chick who's walking around in the background like who is throughout the like chapter in the background who could be going but we don't I, I didn't see her at all in this chapter so I'm not really for sure what Nakaba is going for with um not really for sure what Nakaba is going for with Gawain in general so I, I'm, I'm just very curious I guess to see where all of that goes all in all I thought the chapter wasn't really that bad like it, it was an all right chapter like we got a lot of reveals and a lot of information confirmed as well as the plot was uh like you know progressing forward so I probably give the chapter probably like a six and a half probably about six and a half because it wasn't like the craziest chapter ever you know blew my mind or anything crazy but it was a nice you know it, it was a decent chapter it, it was all right so my score is six and a half that being said make sure you guys tell me down below how you guys feel about the chapter um like who do you guys think Gawain is also what do you guys think about Guinevere do you think Pelgard is here to actually like take Guinevere back to um arthur or, or you think it's just a, some odd coincidence also what do you guys think pelgard is going to do in the capital do you think he's actually just here for a fight or to kidnap Percival, or maybe to you know steal back gawain kind of kind of what do you think is going to like happen here with all of these like separate plot lines i guess kind of coming all together at once I'm just very curious to know you guys opinions on all of that but that being said make sure you guys um like the video as well as subscribe to the channel for more content and aside from that i'll be seeing you all in my next video